Hey everyone, Jonathan Dawson here from the Turks and Caicos in Provo Island. And uh, you know, in, in an environment like this, a setting in like this uh, that I'm in, obviously is going to create different emotions. I mean, there's no doubt that you're going to feel like you want to relax a little bit and explore and get adventurous. We visited a pirate's cave and did some cool things, but you know, what it really focuses you on, for me, is my goals. It makes me think about goals. In fact, earlier today I sat down with my wife and we wrote out a bunch of goals. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that today because here's what I think. I think you got to really ask yourself, who really cares about your goals? Who cares? I put out a lot of content. I put a lot of videos out there. I'm trying to make a difference, save the world one salesperson at a time. I can tell you I care. Many of you think and genuinely believe that I care. But can I possibly care? Should I care as much as you about your own goals? I don't think so. Your management, if you're selling cars, they can tell you they care. Of course they care. Their income is attached to it. They care. But do they really care about whether or not your family can go on a vacation or whether or not you're paying your bills the way you need to pay your bills? Do you think they care at the level you should care about your goals? If you're in management, your owner, of course, cares that you run the department well. But do you think they care the way you should care about your goals? I don't think so. So I want to create this quick video about goals. And specifically, I want to tell you how to care more about your own goals. So when I teach goal setting, one of the techniques I teach salespeople to use is this concept called SMART goal setting, this acronym, S-M-A-R-T. Now I didn't invent the acronym SMART, but I've adjusted it a little bit to more my style, if you will, of what I think is important when setting goals. I want to walk you through this process because I want you to care about your goals. So S stands for specific. Your goals need to be specific. I see a lot of salespeople, and when I talk to them about goals, they're afraid to write down something specific. They, they talk in generalities about the things they, they would like their life to become or the things they want or the things they'd like to have or do. But they're all very general. It's like, I want to make more money. I want to sell more cars, you know. And, and, and that's not specific. I want you to get specific. Now, this is scary. See, this is the part that I think messes with your head, and this is why I think it's so important. People are afraid to get specific about the things they want. Because when you get specific about it, it feels more real. See, when it feels more real, that's what motivates it. That's what makes it better. But see, that's also what brings about fear. The fear of failure, the fear, fear of not attaining it. So getting specific keeps you motivated. So write down specifically, exactly, with laser focus, what it is you're trying to bring into your life, what you're trying to become, and what you want to do. Get specific about your goals. M stands for measurable. The goals have to be able to be measured in some way. You've got to be able to say, I was here and now I'm here. I, I was here and now I'm here. You've got to have a way of showing movement, both for yourself and for anybody else who's watching you progress through your goals. It's specific, gives you something tangible to look at, and measurable gives you a way of determining how much closer to that you have moved. See, I think that goals, a lot of times, salespeople or, or people in general think they have to be really attainable. The, the thing that normally is in the A place of the SMART goals, SMA, attainable or achievable. And I actually think that that's not true. I don't think goals need to necessarily be as attainable as most people think. I think goals need to be aspirational more than they need to be attainable. See, attainable goals are, are, are like when I'm selling 10 cars a month and management asks, what do you want to do? And I say, I'm going to sell 12. That feels really attainable to go you know, 10 to 12. But there's nothing aspirational about that. No one gets excited. Nobody jumps out of bed to sell 12 cars. No one cares. You don't even care about selling two more cars. That's not aspirational for you. So when you think about your goals, they need to be specific and measurable, but they need to be aspirational. They need to draw from within the well. You see, whatever's inside of you, that's what's got to come out. And that's why you got to get big when it comes to your goals. Think bigger than you're thinking right now about what it is that you want and desire and must bring into your life. Now, your goals also have to be related. Now, when I say related, this is another one of my little cell psychology twists, is I think that goals need to be related to your core values. They need to be related to your core being. For, for example, I mean, I, I think a lot of people struggle with wealth. They struggle with seeing themselves as becoming wealthy or rich or successful because in their mind, they have this association that, that tends to be negative towards achieving something like that. After all, most people, when you think of rich people or successful people, there's an association that says they got there on the backs of someone else. They got there by taking advantage of somebody else. Maybe if you're rich, you're also greedy or selfish. And so what this does is it creates a conflict of internal 
uh, core values. So what happens is you may set a big goal, but then there's a part of you, maybe your parents always told you, you know, uh, be reasonable, uh, you know, uh, you know, don't, don't try to become rich, just, just try to be a good person. And so there's this conflict between what it is you want to be and what you've given yourself permission to be. And so you've got to check yourself and ask, what are my core values? And how does achieving this goal express those core values at the highest possible level? That's when you'll start to move towards your goals with passion. And finally, your goals have to be timeline. So you've got specific goals that are measurable, aspirational, that they're related to your core values, and then they're timeline. You see, because you have to put a time table to what it is you're trying to achieve. You've got to write down, this date, I will do this by this time. And you've got to have it written down, you see, because if you won't write it, it won't become real. You'll see this the moment you start doing it. The moment you start getting specific and measurable. The moment you start thinking aspirationally. The moment you start relating to your core values and writing a timeline, you'll start to feel how real these goals will be to you. And it gets scary then, right? That's when it gets scary because that's when fear of loss comes in. But that's when you're about to have a breakthrough. Who cares if you achieve your goals? Ultimately, who cares if not you? If, if you're not going to be the person who wakes up determined to achieve these goals for your family and for your finances and for your freedom, if you're not that person, who's going to be that person? I care, but I can't care more than you should care. I'm Jonathan Dawson, filming from the uh, Caribbean here, Turks and Caicos Island. Love you guys. Hope this matters. We'll talk to you soon.